in the following 10 minutes, I'm going to go very fast over the results, some results of uh, about two years of work. Uh, not only mine, uh, but also Larry Swanson's, and uh, the statistical analysis was done by Dr. Olaf Spons from Indiana University. So first, some definitions, refresh. So the connectome, as it was defined initially by Kutter and Spons in 2005, was the set of all connections. Well, connection means uh, the can be can be found at the lowest level, at the axon level, uh, synaptic level can be found between cell classes or cell types, or can be found, can be defined at the level of brain regions, when brain regions are thought to be, let's say, more or less black boxes. So to specify between these three levels of organization, uh, Macroconnectome is the word or the term for connections at the level of brain regions. I like to start uh, each and every presentation about uh, the rat macroconnectome uh, with this uh, slide from Larry Swanson's uh, Atlas in 2003. It's uh, the central nervous system of the rat flattened. And it shows the central nervous system with all its, let's say, gray regions, gray matter subdivisions and parts, as well as the major fiber tracts. To make the short, the long story short, uh, the smallest regions, the best defined, if you want, regions are about 500. And the simplest way to represent a connectome that means connections of the level of central nervous system would be in a matrix format, which will have a 500 by 500 dimension. So 500 columns and 500 rows. And the cerebral cortex, which I'm going to talk today, it's the macroconnectome of the cerebral cortex I'm going to talk today. It's only this small uh, rectangle, just to put things in perspective. Uh, in gray is the, the central nervous system, the cerebral cortex of the, of the rat, as let's say made a little bit of dissociation from the basal ganglia. For the nomenclature we have used, we have 73 gray matter regions in the cerebral cortex of the rat, and cerebral cortex of the rat in our definition or in our nomenclature means also regions like claustrum or the cortical parts of the amygdala. So it's not only, let's say, the, the set of those 40 or 40-something 40 regions which everybody is used to. So we ha if we have a 73 by 73 um, matrix, that means we have 5,566 association macro-connections in this matrix, possible macro-connections. So, the first thing we've done was to start gathering data from the literature, which for the cerebral cortex is quite uh, rich. And we started with, uh, uh, no, with techniques, track tracing track techniques that uh, were reliable. So from 1960s to today. The, just a word, uh, our way of uh, collating and annotating data is a little bit different than that of neurovisas. After about 250 primary research papers read, annotated, mapped, remapped, and after 16, about 16,000 reports inserted into the database of the brain architecture management system, we can say that we covered the literature, primary literature, which is related to experiments with track tracers in the rat cerebral cortex. So this is the first point, the first message, simple message I want to convey this evening. 
the matrix, so the rat cerebral cortex microconnectome or association microconnectome is covered about 81%, 81.2%, something like this. We have since almost all connectivity data are, are um, expressed, described in uh, qualitative terms, we have a pretty, let's say, uh, developed way of coding for uh, strengths from very strong, which is red, going towards yellow, which is moderate, going towards blue, weak and very weak. We have some, some, some reports of the form X projects to Y and doesn't say the, the strength of the connection. And we say about these that a connection exists, but we don't know the uh, strength. Black means the connection is for sure absent, was found absent. And gray or white means uh, we don't know yet, no data. So in the first form, the right cerebral cortex microconnectome looks like this. 73 by 73 again. From is on the vertical on column, to is on horizontal. So what we've done, the problem is when you start analyzing this data, the first problem, I'm not going for, sorry, I'm not going to uh, get into, into the details of evaluating the reliability of uh, reports of, of uh, track tracers. This is the subject of uh, another, I don't know, maybe a class. Um, the problem is with this, when you start analyzing this system, is with the weights or the strengths of connections. What does it mean very strong? What does it mean very strong versus strong or versus moderate? Looking into the rat literature as best as we could, and also uh, looking uh, at the newest findings in the macaque cortex literature, we said that a 10 to the 4 scale, exponential scale or 4 logarithmic scale, 4 units logarithmic scale would be, would be good enough. So, one, or in this case, 0 0.7 would mean very strong, and the last one, very weak, would be 10 to minus 4. And what we've got? We've got, when we applied cluster analysis, and for cluster analysis, we used, uh, let's say, a rather new way of uh, grouping the things called the uh, Louvain algorithm. We found uh, four modules, which here are shown as weighted connections, and here log weighted to see uh, better graded. And the second message or simple idea that I try to convey this evening is that the four modules we identify from this data, 81% filled with real data is that these modules are orga organized topographically and also structural functionally. We can look at these four modules first as a sensory motor core. M1 is, of the first module is made only from Mainly, mainly only of visual auditory regions. The second M2, which we called, is made of somato, uh, somato sensory and motor regions, but not only primary motor, secondary motor, but also regions like gustatory cortex or visceral cortex, which are also motor. The third one would be, the, let's say, the dorsal part of a limbic shell, if you want, and includes those regions that are more or less involved in the navigation of space of the, of the animal, plus anterior cingulate cortices, expectation. And finally, the fourth module, which would be something like the ventral part of the shell, of the limbic shell is made purely, almost purely, of regions related to olfaction. 
in another way of representing this network of 73 by 73 is in this way, uh, let's say a 3D network, the colors are the ones I used before, so this would be the olfactory module, and this would be the visual auditory module. Look at the distance. Look at the distance between them. Very few shared connections. And the green one would be the dorsal limbic, and here the blue one would be the so-called somatomotor. The size of the uh, bullets are proportional with, um, with uh, the degree of, run of the node. So I'm sad that uh, I have to wrap up. Okay. The last thing I want to say, um, I hope I, do, I don't abuse of your patience, is that the so-called rich, called rich club regions, the most important regions in the system, are also organized, let's say, structurally, and let's say, are organized in a topographical fashion. So I don't say any, I cannot say any uh, conclusions because the story is not uh, said yet. Thank you.